Jennifer Joanna Aniston was born on February 11, 1969 in Sherman Oaks, California. Her parents were actors of Greek origin. Jennifer is not the only child in the family. She also has a brother, John, her mother's son from her first marriage. My favorite memory is when they would have poker parties. Because my dad is, was and still is on a soap opera and their actor friends would come and sing songs around the piano and play games, play, play charades, and they were just funny, fun people. But the relationship between parents gradually began to deteriorate. Little Jennifer felt responsible for the atmosphere in the family. As the years passed, tension came between my mom and dad, and I'd do funny things to try to bring back the laughter. She recalled, I guess I've learned to make a living doing what I did to try to heal myself as a kid. I liked making people laugh. It was such a source of survival for me as a kid, you know, to, to be a clown and make people laugh. Unfortunately, the couple divorced when their daughter was nine years old. It greatly affected Jennifer and her views on marriage. The girl did not see her father for a whole year. It was also hard to communicate with her mother, Nancy Dow. Jennifer didn't live up to her expectations, especially about looks and glamour. Her friends became her support team. Moreover, she still communicates with many of them. Many years later, reflecting on her relationship with her mother, Jennifer said that she understands how difficult it is to be a single mother, constantly looking for a way to earn money and support two children. My mom said those things because she really loved me, Aniston admitted in a recent interview. It wasn't her trying to be a bitch or knowing she would be making some deep wounds that I would then spend a lot of money to undo. She did it because that was what she grew up with. So many struggles that everybody has, especially when it's like, you don't know what you're filling up. Are you filling up a void? Is it your father leaving? Is it, is it your fear of failure? Is it that I will never be that thin? I will never be as beautiful as you, whoever you are? And I think once you become, once you figure out your... Um, you know, who you are and who, what you love about yourself. I think it all kind of falls into place eventually. As a teenager, Jennifer managed to visit her father from time to time in Los Angeles, where he starred in the TV series Days of Our Lives. Probably, those trips to the City of Angels and parents' actors influenced her desire to try her hand at the cinema. At school, she was far from the best student. In one interview, the actress joked that there was a group of teachers, anonymous, who hated Jennifer Aniston. The only thing Jennifer enjoyed was art class. Once, her watercolor was exhibited at the Metropolitan Museum. She compensated for failures in her studies with charm and artistry. Jennifer became a member of the drama club of the Rudolf Steiner School when she was 11 years old. One of the actors who made the biggest impression on her during that period was Laurence Olivier. One day, when Jen was about 13, her father called her to search for tomorrow as an extra. In the middle of the scene, someone from the crew told Jennifer to switch places with another young extra. Everything happened quickly, and she did not attach any importance to it. On the way home, her father revealed that the camera wouldn't have filmed Aniston if they hadn't switched places. The young actress felt terrible, absolutely mortified and humiliated that the poor girl got bumped because of her, the daughter of the soap star. But Jen learned a good lesson. Nothing in this world, especially in the film business, is not given to you just like that. You have to fight for a place in the sun. After graduating, Jennifer entered Manhattan's Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts. When the father learned that his daughter had chosen his path, he was dismayed. Aniston was excited and incredibly happy when she finally left her parents' house. According to her, living with her mother was not completely terrible and unpleasant, but there were enough problems. Soon their relationship would deteriorate, but for that moment, Jen was taking the first steps towards her dream. Jennifer Aniston began her acting career at the Public Theater in 1988. She always recalls one of her performances. The actress had a scene where she sat, looked at the audience, and said one line, which always caused laughter. Unfortunately, it was hard to live on just earnings from theater, so the aspiring actress had to earn extra money wherever she could. I worked at an advertising agency as a receptionist, then I wasn't allowed to do that anymore, and then <clears throat> I went to work for the uh, lovely woman who ran the broadcasting department. Then they were like, okay. <laughs> then they gave me this, why don't you try bike messengering? <laughs> they thought that would be great because I'm like 17 and ride a bike and that would be fun. And it's just not, um, not my thing. With cylinders and backpacks and that yeah. lasted one day. In addition, she worked as a waitress in a diner with the ironic name Jackson Hole. At the age of 20, Jen accidentally found out that she had dyslexia. 
It is a common learning disability of neurological origin. It makes it difficult to read, write, and generally decipher letters. That discovery was life-changing for Jen. In the cinema world, Jennifer is not the only one who lives with this diagnosis. In our other video, we already talked about Keanu Reeves also has dyslexia. Her first film role did not even mention Aniston in the credits. Jen starred in the sci-fi adventure film Mac and Me. The following year, she was on The Howard Stern Show as a spokesperson for Nutrisystem. There were no more exciting roles in the theater, and after two years of work in New York, Jennifer moved to Los Angeles. In 1989, she began to appear on television, but as usual, the first projects were not particularly successful. The sitcoms Malloy and Ferris Bueller did not gain popularity. At the same time, when Ferris Bueller failed, Aniston's fleeting romance with her colleague on the series, Charlie Schletter, also ended. He played the younger brother of Jen's character. After a minor role in the television film Camp Cucamonga, Jennifer got into the 1993 horror film Leprechaun. Although the film received negative reviews at first, later it became a cult classic. In 2014, Entertainment Weekly named Jennifer's role in Leprechaun her worst role. Jennifer is also not thrilled with her character, because years later, in a relationship with Justin Thoreau, she was very embarrassed when her fiancé stumbled upon this film on TV. But after the release of this film, casting directors began to notice Jen more often. She appeared in a couple of TV shows, after which she got the role that made her famous worldwide. Initially, Friends creators wanted Jennifer to audition for the role of Monica Geller. But after reading the script, Aniston realized that she only wanted to be Rachel and no one else. But everything turned out that way because, at the same time, Courtney Cox was going to try for the role of Rachel. She also got acquainted with the script and realized Monica was closer to her. But even though Jennifer was one of the main contenders for the role, it was not easy for her to get it. At that time, the actress starred in the not-so-successful CBS series Muddling Through. Feeling that the new project would change her life, Jennifer, almost in tears, begged the producers of NBC to do something so that she could participate in Friends. They took her, but Jennifer started in the pilot without the certainty that she would remain in the project, since she continued to work on Muddling Through. And then NBC specifically put Danielle Steele's film at the same time as Aniston's show. Thus, its ratings literally killed and provided the actress with participation in Friends. Maybe this will disappoint someone, but the actors do not share the fan love for the Friends intro. You know, we were all never a big fan. No one was really a big fan of that theme song. It felt... Oh, right, right. Really? No, 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 no. It's it's oh, you've shocked us now. No, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to say that, but we felt it was a little, I don't know, dancing in a pond. It felt <laughs> like a fountain. felt sort of odd, but we did it. When the lead six were confirmed, the show's director, Jimmy Burroughs, or as Jennifer affectionately calls him, Papa, took them to Las Vegas. They dined at the Spago inside Caesar's Palace to enjoy one last chance at anonymity. It is symbolic that after six years, the actors returned there to shoot the wedding of Rachel and Ross. Papa wasn't wrong. The sitcom was released in 1994 and received good reviews and solid ratings, and the actors who played the iconic six woke up famous. Simple at first glance, the idea to show the life of young friends living in New York resonated with the audience. That first year, we shot to number one in summer reruns. Jennifer recalls, People came over to me at a drugstore one day and said, We've been following you for blocks and just wanted to know if it was you and can we have your autograph? I'm standing there with toilet paper under one arm and tampons under another and I say, Sure. Millions of women have tried to copy Rachel Green's famous hairstyle. Very iconic. Jennifer herself was far from enthusiastic about it. This is how the actress talks about how her hairdresser did this haircut. Yeah, he uh, was was loaded when he gave me the haircut. <laughs> Don't know it was mine, so uh, which is true. And he uh, he didn't think about like, oh, she's gonna have to do this herself. I'm having a great time being creative with this blow dryer, and then leaves me with a round brush and a hair dryer. I don't, and I don't know how to make it look like that. I just, you know. So yeah, it, that must be hell. It was yeah. a little bit. It was just that wouldn't say hell because there are worse things than than that. <laughs> The fame that fell on young actors was a difficult burden. Camera flashes followed them everywhere. Everyone wanted to know where Rachel Green dined and with whom she slept. Even after years of working on the project, fame will shock the actress. It will still be difficult for her to come to terms with the phenomenal popularity of Friends, even though Jennifer grew up in the world of actors. Aniston admits that one of the things that helped her cope with stress and not go crazy was her communication with her mother. Jennifer never lost heart or lashed out in public, as she grew up watching her mother sit comfortably in victimhood 
and didn't like how it looked. Her relationship with her mother got worse and worse every year, and finally deteriorated when in 1996, Nancy gave a frank interview to the tabloid show Hard Copy, where she colorfully described her life with Jennifer. But the last straw for Aniston was a book called From Mother and Daughter to Friends, a memoir which Nancy Dow wrote in 1999. They say that after that, Jennifer stopped communicating with her mother for as much as 15 years. But back to Friends. The sitcom's success was a combination of a good idea, talented writers, and a perfectly matched cast. David Schwimmer recalled that he felt special energy literally at the first rehearsals. It is hard to find even one good actor who fits perfectly into the role, but to gather six such people and see the chemistry between them is a miracle. The script writers created an atmosphere where actors could play roles well and offer their ideas. Thus, together, they created the funniest and most emotional material. During filming, the actors really became friends. Lisa Kudrow recalled, When we started shooting that first season, Jimmy said, Use my dressing room to hang out, because it was bigger. We needed to hang out, get to know each other, and bond as quickly as possible, because that's the only way that the show was going to work. They dined together after work, had lunch during breaks, and played poker and other games. At some point, the actors also decided to deal with finance together, creating something like a small trade union. Initially, they received a different amount, but when it came time to renew their contracts, the actors decided that it would be fair if all six friends had the same fees. After the fifth season, they each started receiving $100,000 per episode. In the final season, it rose to $1 million per episode. Thus, Aniston, along with Lisa Kudrow and Courtney Cox, got into the Guinness Book of Records as the highest paid television actress of all time. Their efforts were appreciated not only by the audience, but also by critics. Jen's first major award was the Screen Actors Guild Award. The actress was nominated five times for an Emmy and won the award in 2002. And in 2003, she was also awarded the Golden Globe. Their lives were intertwined with their characters. Surely you remember Pat the dog that Joey once bought. In fact, it belonged to Jennifer. This statue was given to her by a friend for good luck at the beginning of the friend's filming. I mean, it's just so realistic. I know. Yeah. His name's Pat. Pat the dog. Oh, oh, I get it! <laughs> On the set of the fourth season, Aniston met actor Tate Donovan. In this story, his character has an affair with Rachel. A romantic relationship began between the actors, which lasted from 1995 to 1998. Many called Tate Jen's first love. It was rumored that Donovan even proposed to her, and Aniston said yes. But the preparation was delayed, and at some point, the actress decided to part with her fiancé. Aniston was not limited to friends alone. Between the filming, she found time to work on movies. But the experiments were not always successful. For her role in the 1996 film She's the One, Jennifer received a Golden Raspberry nomination in the Worst New Star category. Because of her role in Friends, the actress was mostly offered roles in comedies such as Dream for an Insomniac and Till There Was You. In 1997, Jennifer received her first major role in the romantic comedy Picture Perfect. The film received mixed reviews, but Aniston was rated positively. The melodrama The Object of My Affection was also criticized. On the set, Jen began an affair with a colleague, Paul Rudd. The couple went out several times, but pretty soon broke up. Despite the separation, they managed to maintain friendly relations and later played together in Friends as well as in Wanderlust. Aniston's acting breakthrough can be considered her work in the independent dramedy The Good Girl in 2002. There, she threw away the image of the girl next door that stuck to her and embodied a 30-year-old woman in depression who cheats on her husband. The film had a limited release, but was received very positively by critics. For example, Roger Ebert wrote, After languishing in a series of overlooked movies that ranged from the entertaining office space to the disposable picture perfect, Jennifer Aniston has at last decisively broken with her friend's image in an independent film of satiric fire and emotional turmoil. It will no longer be possible to consider her in the same way. Jennifer's nominations at the Film Independent Spirit Awards and Satellite Awards were great bonuses. In 2003, Jennifer was lucky enough to become the Girl of God. Well, to be more precise, the girlfriend of the Interim God. Of course, we are talking about Bruce Almighty and her role of kind, sympathetic grace. The film was a success at the box office. Despite mixed reviews from critics, it eventually became a classic. 
Jen received a Teen Choice Awards nomination for a Choice Comedy Actress, and along with Jim Carrey, was nominated for Best Kiss at the MTV Movie Awards. Aniston's personal life developed no less rapidly than her career. In 1998, Jennifer's agent arranged for her to date Brad Pitt. So, one of the brightest couples of those times appeared. For the first time, the actress met in the early 90s, but both at that time had relationships with others and were not interested in each other. Only a blind date, organized many years later, helped them get closer. Their relationship developed rapidly, but the couple officially confirmed their dating a year later. For the first time, the lovers appeared together in public during the Emmy ceremony in September 1999. A few months later, they took the stage at a Sting concert. There, viewers could see the engagement ring on Jen's hand for the first time. It was made according to Brad's sketch. Pitt was happy to say in an interview that his fiance is the woman of his life. He also noted that when he saw Jen for the first time, he realized that she was created for him. They became one of the most beloved and brightest couples in Hollywood. In 2002, Aniston and Pitt formed the production company Plan B Entertainment with producer Brad Gray. Things soon went like clockwork, and by 2004, the company had 17 films in production, including Troy and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When Jennifer was asked about whether it is hard to be in a relationship with a star being no less famous, she answered, It's a challenge. Aniston has always insisted that they are the most ordinary lovers, just like the others. And when they were called one of the sexiest couples in Hollywood, Pitt and Jen just laughed. On July 29th, 2000, these unsexiest people got married. The event was held in a mansion in Malibu and was one of the most expensive at that time. The couple paid almost a million dollars to celebrate their wedding. Despite the scale and publicity in the media, there are almost no photos from the event on the network. Eyewitnesses say that the location was decorated with 50,000 flowers and fireworks cost $20,000. They gave the wedding vows playfully. Jen promised to always make Pitt's favorite banana smoothie and Pitt promised to find balance on the thermostat. By the way, Jennifer did not invite her mother to the wedding. Apparently, she did not want to spoil the event with toxic showdowns. The couple spent their honeymoon in Seychelles. Upon their return, they gladly equipped their mansion in Beverly Hills. Brad and I used to joke that every piece of furniture was either a museum piece or just uncomfortable. Jen said, He definitely had his sense of style, and I definitely have my sense of style, and sometimes they clashed. I wasn't so much into modern. In 2001, Brad appeared as a guest star on Friends. Ironically, he played the guy who hates Rachel. Rachel Green. Oh, oh, that's right. Are, are you going to be okay? Oh, I'll, I'll be fine. Just, God, I hate it, Ross. I hate it. As much as Jennifer loved Friends, she felt the show needed to end. She did not want to squeeze the last juices out of the popular show. That is why the actress doubted for a long time whether she wanted to act in the final season. Only when the creators reduced the number of episodes from 24 to 18, she agreed to appear in the final season. The sitcom finale was released on May 6, 2004. In the U.S., it was watched by 52.5 million viewers, making it the most watched entertainment TV show since the Seinfeld finale in 1998. Each actor took home a piece of the iconic cafe when the series ended. They took a piece of the fake sidewalk outside Central Park. There are people who say that watching Friends has saved them during a cancer diagnosis, or so many people with just so much gratitude for a little show. Aniston said years later, with tears in her eyes, we really loved each other, and we took care of each other. I don't know why it still resonates. There are no iPhones. It's just people talking to each other. Nobody talks to each other anymore. Having finished a long-term project, Jennifer wanted to take a break from filming and admitted that she was already ready for children. But fate had other plans for her. On January 7, 2005, like a bolt from the blue, there was news that one of the most beautiful couples in Hollywood was breaking up. The fans were shocked and disappointed, and the media was already trumpeting that Angelina Jolie was the reason for the divorce. They met Pitt on the set of the spy drama Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The details of the break are still unknown. There's a version that the relationship between Pitt and Aniston began to deteriorate even before the film, and acquaintance with Jolie only brought Brad closer to the decision that he had been considering for a long time. Adherents of this version found out some interviews with Jen, dating back to 2003, where she casually admitted that she was not completely sure that Pitt was the love of her life, but she also said she knows they have something special. Skeptics said that Brad and Jen are too different to build a long-term relationship. Others believe it was a perfect marriage, and Pitt's meeting with Angelina spoiled everything. Moreover, even before meeting Pitt, Jolie had a reputation as a woman capable of stealing someone's boyfriend. One way or another, 
It was very difficult for Jen. She stayed at a house in Malibu in the company of her old dog named Norman. The actress did not read the news and did not turn on the TV. Jennifer did her best to protect herself from the outside world, annoying the media and fans who were eager to delve into the dirty laundry of celebrities and find out the details of the divorce. The fans divided into those who were on Jennifer's side and those who justified Pitt and Jolie. It got to the point that t-shirts with the inscriptions Team Aniston and Team Jolie went on sale. They bought the first ones more often, with a difference of 25 to 1. But to be honest, this was a little consolation for Jen. The paparazzi, whom she once called rats, literally hunted her down to capture a lonely and abandoned woman on camera. The craziest theories were in the tabloids at that time. For example, one could find an assumption that Pitt broke up with Jen because of her unwillingness to have children. Even though, quite recently, in an interview, the actress announced her readiness to give birth to a child. A man divorcing would never be accused of choosing a career over children. Jennifer resented in a candid interview with Vanity Fair. That really pissed me off. I've never in my life said I didn't want to have children. I did, and I do, and I will. The women that inspire me are the ones who have careers and children. Why would I want to limit myself? I've always wanted to have children, and I would never give up that experience for a career. I want to have it all. The couple said they were parting friends, maintaining mutual respect and love, but it was not easy since in the same 2005, pictures of Brad with Angelina and her son Maddox on the beach in Kenya appeared in magazines. And already in 2006, Joe Lee and Pitt announced that they were expecting a baby. It was extremely hurtful to Jen that he was seen with another woman so quickly after they separated, said Andrea Bendewald, an actress who has been one of Aniston's closest friends since she was a teenager. Sessions with a psychotherapist and yoga helped Jennifer to cope with divorce. Her friends really supported the actress in hard times. It felt like she needed to learn how to walk again. She should get used to being alone again. But Jen struggled to see the glass half full. 2005 was an awful year for Aniston, not only in her personal life, but also in her career. The actress again tried to get out of the role of a sweet girl, but not very successfully. The crime thriller Derailed with Clive Owen was negatively received by critics. The audience was also not enthusiastic. Another film of that year was the family drama Rumor Has It. Alas, the film received negative reviews and became a box office bomb, grossing $88.9 million against its $70 million budget. The next year was a little easier. The comedy melodrama The Breakup was released. In the film, Jennifer's character tried to sort out a relationship with her husband. It's ironic, right? did a movie called The Breakup. I just kind of leaned into the end. Uh -huh. I just was like, you know what, guys? Let's just put this, in, let's make this a completely new chapter. Critics, again, did not appreciate the project, but the audience, judging by the box office, was satisfied. The film grossed over $205 million worldwide at a cost of $52 million. Together with Vince Vaughn, Jennifer received the Teen Choice Award in the Choice Movie Chemistry category. The chemistry between the characters flowed smoothly into the romance between the actors. Fans even gave the couple the name Vognesen and compared them with Brangelina. But Vognesen did not last long. Almost immediately after filming, the couple broke up. Either the heart wounds from parting with Pitt were still too fresh, or the actors confused the movie with reality. It also happens. While her ex-husband shone at all events with his new wife and rapidly was getting children, Aniston plunged into healing work. Basically, Jen chose the usual reliable comedies and melodramas in which she, of course, was great. One of her most popular films of those years was the family tragicomedy Marley and Me. The film is about a couple who get a dog to see if they're ready to have a baby, but they come across the most unbearable dog of all possibilities. The dog Marley was played by as many as 22 different dogs. Since both Owen Wilson, who played Jen's on-screen husband, and Aniston herself are avid dog lovers in real life, they brought their pets Garcia and Norman to the set every day. Aniston's dog made its first cameo appearance during the film's beach scene. In addition to Norman, Jennifer had another dog named Dolly. The actress found the animal shortly after breaking up with Pitt at a Mexican animal shelter and took it for herself. Interestingly, in Metro's 20 movies that make men cry poll, Marley and Me took fifth place. You think it's a kid's movie or a dog movie, but it's a lot more than that, reflected Jennifer. I made that assumption until I had my heart ripped out. It's marriage, it's children, it's a career, it's ego, it's success versus failure. All of these things that I think universally affect people at some point in a relationship. Jen was nominated for the Kids' Choice Awards and Teen Choice Awards. In 2008, the actress began a relationship with John Mayer. 
According to the musician, it was not a fleeting romance. He had feelings for Jennifer, but apparently not so serious, since the singer started an affair while on vacation in Mexico and Jennifer found out about it. John asked for forgiveness, but Aniston could not forgive him. Meanwhile, Jennifer healed heart wounds with the help of movies. In 2010, she appeared as a guest star in the TV series Cougar Town, where her friend Courtney Cox had the lead role. The actresses continue their close relationship after the end of Friends. Courtney and I, every weekend, absolutely. Every, we, we're, we, live, we live like two doors away from each other. Um, and the others I speak to randomly, but not, not, not as regularly as I think we all assumed that we would. Jennifer even became the godmother of Courtney's daughter, Coco. The two have gone through failed marriages and ups and downs in their careers, but they still continue to support each other. Girlfriends spend Christmas and birthdays together, go on vacations together, and support each other on the red carpet during the premieres of their films. Next in Jennifer's career were the comedies Just Go With It, The Switch and Horrible Bosses, and the comedy detective The Bounty Hunter. According to rumors, on the set of the latter, the actress began an affair with Gerard Butler, but the actors denied this. On The Switch and the sequel Horrible Bosses, Aniston's friend Jason Bateman was her co-star. They met when Jennifer was 25. Since then, the actors have often seen each other and were always glad to have the opportunity to act together. We've always just really gotten along well. Bateman once said, I think I was just fortunate to be a good fit for parts in her films. Jennifer Aniston's favorite food. I'm gonna say carbonara. Ooh, that's good. That's kind of where I'm at these days. That's, I know it's what I like to eat most that you make. I know. Horrible Boss is a screenwriter, Michael Markowitz, admitted that he always had these actors in mind when writing the story. So it's not surprising there's some chemistry between their characters. Aniston said she quickly got over her embarrassment during the flirting scenes with Bate. 2011 brought Jennifer changes in her personal life. After filming in Wanderlust, she began a relationship with actor and director Justin Thoreau. They have known each other since 2007, thanks to Ben Stiller. I thought he was so sweet and very nice, Jen said of their first meeting. But I remember thinking he was very dark. At first you think he could be like a serial killer, but he's actually the nicest person in the world. Justin was married at the time of Wanderlust, and Jen said they were just friends. But soon after filming, photos began to appear in which the actors spent time together. Of course, it became clear to everyone that it was far from friendship. Thoreau was front row for Aniston's hand and footprint ceremony in front of Grauman's Chinese Theater in Los Angeles. Their relationship developed rapidly. In January 2012, just eight months after they met, they bought a house in Los Angeles for $22 million. It was his humor, mainly, that drew her to Thoreau, Aniston says. He's the easiest guy to hang around. He was so completely in his skin. It was the first time I remember being so comfortable with a romantic interest, like with all my gay friends. A year after starting a relationship on his birthday, Justin presented Jen with an eight-carat diamond ring and proposed marriage to her. However, the couple waited another three years before tying the knot. We just want to do it when it's perfect, and we're not rushed, and no one is rushing from a job or rushing to a job, Jennifer explained. As soon as it became obvious that their relationship was not a simple fling for a couple of months, the media tried again to find out if Jennifer was going to have a baby. Just don't. Pay attention, best you can. I think I used to really, for there was a period where I was hell bent on saying, that's not true, that's not right, that's not fair, that's a, that, you know, really sort of. And now I, I just think you just gotta let it roll off your back and you realize, I think everybody knows it's all BS and like soap opera on paper. Do you understand the appetite? I don't understand it. Ma'am? Yeah. No. I just think it's, it's like watching a soap opera. <laughs> Over the past decade, Jennifer Aniston has been pregnant more times than is physically possible for any woman. Each photo in a bathing suit was examined with the utmost care, and the paparazzi were ready to knock down ordinary passers-by to get closer to the couple and take provocative pictures. In 2016, Jen broke down and wrote a poignant essay for the Huffington Post, which began with the phrase, For the record, I am not pregnant. What I am is fed up. In it, the actress noted that the objectification and scrutiny we put women through is absurd and disturbing. She's outraged by the statement accepted by society that women are somehow incomplete, unsuccessful, or unhappy if they're not married with children. Jennifer and Justin married in 2015 in a secret ceremony at their home in Bel Air. 
Unlike Jen's previous wedding, that celebration was much more modest and family-friendly. The guests were told it was Thoreau's birthday party to make the event a surprise. According to rumors, Aniston again did not invite her mother, although after Jennifer's divorce from Brad Pitt, the women began to get closer. Their relationship remained difficult until the death of Nancy in 2016. Jen paid Nancy's bills to the last and once admitted in an interview that she could forgive her mother. It's important, she says. It's toxic to have that resentment, that anger. I learned that by watching my mom never let go of it. I remember saying, thank you for showing me what never to be. So that's what I mean about taking the darker things that happen in our lives, the not so happy moments, and trying to find places to honor them because of what they have given to us. Not surprisingly, Jennifer decided to postpone the wedding for several years. During that period, she was busy with numerous projects. Comedies hit the screens one after another. They traditionally received neutral reviews from critics while earning excellent box office. It meant that the audience was still eager to see their favorite comedic actress. For a kiss with Jason Sudeikis and the acclaimed We're the Millers, Jennifer received an MTV award. But the actress also had time for dramatic films. In 2014, the film Cake premiered. It is a dark story about a woman who survived a car accident but lost her son. Jennifer's fans were surprised by this choice of role. For the sake of the role, she had to gain a little weight. Jen stopped her usual workouts for two and a half months and stopped monitoring her diet as carefully as usual. The actress admitted that it was a real challenge for her to tell the story in such a way that the complex main character would not be hated for her actions. Playing a broken character with a hard fate who literally drowns in her grief was not easy. But the critics were delighted. Jennifer has received nominations for various prestigious film awards, including the Critics' Choice Movie Awards and the Golden Globe Awards. And the organizers of the Golden Raspberry Award were so impressed with her performance that they nominated the actress for the Razzle Redeemer Award. It is awarded to actors who have rehabilitated their reputations after a series of unsuccessful films. But the critics did not rejoice for long. In 2016, Jennifer appeared on the screen in the romantic comedy Mother's Day and then in the comedy Office Christmas Party, which traditionally received mixed reviews. Jennifer admits that she has always been drawn to the comedy genre. I remember in high school doing a Chekhov play. She says, it wasn't funny, and I was making it funny. And my teacher said, why don't you just be funny because you have it in you? I am not funny, I am a serious actor. And he said, no, you're actually funny, and I think you should pay attention to that. Her undeniable talent for everything to do with humor is confirmed by the director of Office Christmas Party, Josh Gordon. We created this character for Jennifer because she's absolutely fearless when it comes to playing somewhat unlikable characters in comedies. For her, the more daring the role, the better. By the way, in this film, the actress once again worked with Jason Bateman in a feature at Aniston Remarked. This is our fifth movie together, I think. It's something like, it almost doesn't feel like work. In 2017, at 48 years old, Jennifer ranked second on the Forbes list of the highest paid actresses. And although she conquered all new peaks, not everything in Jennifer's life was not so sweet. In February 2018, she and Justin announced their separation. Everyone immediately began to speculate what had happened. Someone suspected Thoreau of treason, and someone believed that the reason for everything was the dispute about the couple's place of residence. Like it or not, we didn't have that dramatic split, and we love each other. Justin says, I am sincere when I say that I cherish our friendship. It would be a loss if we weren't in contact. For me personally. And I'd like to think the same for her. It seems that they really remained friends after the breakup. We don't talk every day, but we call each other. We FaceTime. We text. Thero says, Whatever the reason for the breakup, they continue to spend time in the company of mutual friends and congratulate each other on social networks on their birthdays. While the media relished the details of the celebrity's divorce, a musical comedy film called Thumplin' was released on Netflix. The script for it, based on the book of the same name by Julie Murphy, was written by Jennifer's best friend, Kristen Hahn. Aniston played the role of Rosie, a former beauty queen who runs a teen beauty pageant in her small town. Her plump daughter, whom Rosie calls Dumplin', offended by her mother's constant reproaches and detachment, enters the contest. As a result, the protest turns into a celebration of friendship and inclusiveness. Aniston has long wanted to star in a film about the relationship between mothers and daughters. Part of what drew her to Dumpling was how the plot resonated with her challenging upbringing, as she puts it. Another highlight for Jennifer in Dumplin is the soundtrack, which was written by her favorite country singer Dolly Parton. It is enough to recall that the actress named her dog after Dolly to understand the level of Aniston's love for her. According to Jen, working with the legend was a thrill. 
Remembering the day the actress came to the studio to listen to the soundtrack, Parton says that Aniston would listen to the song and she would just cry and cry. You've got to be really sensitive for things to touch you like that. In general, it is noticeable that the project has become very personal for the actress. Not surprisingly, Jen's performance received positive reviews. The experiments with serious stories did not end there. In 2019, The Morning Show was released on Apple TV+, Plus, the first TV series since Friends, perhaps one of the most important roles in her career. The plot follows a successful TV show host whose life starts to go downhill when her co-host is fired due to a harassment scandal. We've been on the other side of it for so many years, right. being, doing this. Um, but, uh, I, yes, I went and I shadowed a GMA. Oh, okay. Got there at 7 o'clock in the morning. Re oh, really? And it is a fascinating world. It's like an engine that revs up for, for these two hours from 5 to 7, and it's just... They go, go, go. Combining a well-balanced take on Me Too with a depiction of the cutthroat world of television, the story received critical acclaim. For her role, Jennifer received a Screen Actors Guild Award, Golden Globe, and Emmy nominations. But not only movies and divorce have occupied Jen's thoughts lately. For five years, the actress worked on the beauty brand Lola V. And so, in 2021, she finally introduced the first product, a hair detangler. Jennifer's main goal is to create a product that is good for the environment, good for our hair, take out all the crappy chemicals, and have it perform. Uh, Lola V is the Lola name v. of your product. Yeah, which yes. is the name of my first car. It's not that fancy. The <laughs> Jen, is it really the name of your first car? Yeah. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah. Preparation took so long because Jen wanted every little detail, including the composition of the product, the look of the bottles, and the brand message to be perfect. To promote the brand, Aniston even registered on Instagram. It was not easy because she does not really like social networks. But the fans were delighted. Aniston's Instagram page gained a million subscribers after 5 hours and 16 minutes after registration. Thus, the actress broke the world record. And this once again confirms the phenomenon of Jennifer Aniston. Unlike many actors with whom she started at the same time, Jen is still at the top of her fame, and the audience's love for her does not fade away. It is impossible not to admire her performance and how stunning she looks at her age. Sports and yoga help the actress to stay in shape. Jennifer exercises every day for about an hour and a half. In 2017, she also discovered boxing. It's the longest Jen has done other than yoga. In addition, Jennifer discovered meditation. I'm on a really good personal strict regime, she notes. These days, I've been doing it every day. I have a little place at home, and I do it for about 20 minutes at different times, usually right after a cup of coffee and before the chaos starts. Her house is a cozy nest where the actress's numerous friends are always welcome and which she gladly equips. Jennifer is known for her passion for art and antiques. Her living room displays paintings by Marc Chagall, Robert Motherwell, and conceptual artist Glenn Ligon, the last of which she bought at a fundraiser for Heidi. She also enjoys painting by herself. Aniston learned to knit as a child, but abandoned this activity for many years. She decided to try again when her stylist gave the actress knitting needles and thread, and she got into knitting. Her pets also tune her in the right way. Jennifer has three dogs, Clyde, Sophie, and Lord Chesterfield. Jennifer Aniston lives a full life and assures journalists that marriage is not something necessary for her. Why do we want a happy ending? How about just a happy existence? A happy process? We're all in process constantly, she adds. However, Jennifer admits she is not opposed to starting a new relationship. Never say never, but I don't have any interest, she says. I'd love a relationship, who knows? There are moments I want to just crawl up in a ball and say I need support. It would be wonderful to come home and fall into somebody's arms and say, that was a tough day. As for the rumors and speculation about pregnancy, which did not stop even after Aniston's divorce from Thoreau, now they seem to have come to an end. I have zero regrets, she says. I actually feel a little relief now because there is no more, can I? Maybe. 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 I don't have to think about that anymore. Looking back at these long years of persecution and rumors, it's scary to even imagine how difficult it was for her. While Jennifer has learned to take all speculation more lightly over time, she is, in her own words, not superhuman to the point where she can't let it creep in and hurt her. In an attempt to work through the trauma of paparazzi interference in her personal life, Jennifer once starred in a comic video about herself. The video features a pregnancy that the actress allegedly hid from the public, already born children, and other crazy, untruthful gossip. You make me hide. I think you're ashamed of me. <gasps> Honey, that is not true. Now please, 
before anybody sees you, would you get inside? And would you please take your little brother with you? Oh. Hurry! Come on, scoot! But fans and tabloids will always find new gossip. Recently, the network has been talking about a possible reunion of Jennifer with Brad Pitt. And the fact is that in 2020, they appeared together in an online reading of the comedy Fun Times at Ridgemont High, which was broadcast on the core charity Facebook channel. In addition to the former spouses, nine more well-known actors took part in the reading. But the audience's attention was drawn to Aniston and Pitt, especially when they read out a spicy scene where Jennifer's character seduces Brad's character. You know how cute I always thought you were? I think you're so sexy. Will you come to me? Angle on Brad and daydream. The actors added fuel to the fire backstage at the SAG Awards 2020. On that day, photographers captured the moment they hug and chat sweetly. As a bonus, fans who dream of reuniting their favorite couple received a video of Jennifer's emotional reaction to Brad's award. The actors themselves say that there is nothing between them. Brad contacted Jen after her mom died and she was touched that he knew what a difficult time it was. Brad wishes he'd handled the end of their marriage in a more thoughtful manner. He asked for Jen's forgiveness a long time ago, and she gave it, said a source close to Pitt. Whatever the future of Jennifer's personal life, we can be sure that the actress has something to enjoy besides love relationships. She is a strong, self-sufficient woman, a talented actress, and an entrepreneur.